Hello, everyone, and welcome to part two of episode 42 of the Dump and Chase podcast. As I stated in part one, uh, we interviewed Andrew Goldman. The interview went a tad bit longer uh, than we thought it was going to. And instead of releasing an episode that was almost an hour long, uh, we decided to break them up into two parts. And for those of you who skipped over part one of the episode, we forgive you. I never agreed to that. No, we don't. I, no, I did not agree to that. No. Okay, seriously, yeah. people, if you, if you listen to this first, come on. I mean, if you're Andrew, I can understand you listening to this part first. Go back and listen to part one, then come to this one. And with nothing else to add here, this is our interview with Phantoms Team President Andrew Goldman. Okay, so here we go. Coming to us live from uh, his living room in Maryland, Phantoms Team President Andrew Goldman. Uh, how was the drive out there? What the drive was easy. It was a it was a good weekend in Youngstown, and and have a little bit of break. So home in Maryland. How long of a trip is that for you? Four and a half hours door to door. It's not too bad at all. How fast are you going? <laughs> um, you don't have to let, comment. Let me, let me think about how I can answer this question. I, I will say this, Justin. You know, I, I am a believer that if you are under 10 miles an hour uh above the speed limit you are likely not to get pulled over um and i try to observe that to the best of my ability so the speed limit 70 most of the way so i'll let you do the math all righty all right, well, 89 <laughs> well we'll, we'll start we'll start with a little human interest you, okay so you got these four and a half hour drives what's what's cranking on the stereo uh when you're making these trips back and forth yeah, I have to say that um, I, I have often been made fun of for my for my musical selection, Sam. Um, it could, you know, I, I I do have Cirrus, so you know, could be '80s, '90s, you know, could be uh, you know, sort of a, a a mix of of you know whatever. Not the uh, not the rap hits of today, but the <laughs> the the more pop hits of today. Uh, and then every now and again, if my 17 year old is with me, um, it's a lot of music that I don't know any of the words to. Um, but having said that podcast, Spitting Chicklets and, and some of the other hockey uh, podcasts, you guys oftentimes uh, help me pass the time. So it's good. There you <laughs> go. Don't be ashamed of what you listen to. This is a judgment free zone. I, 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 let me let me be clear. I said I get made fun of. I didn't say I'm ashamed of. Oh, okay. Different. Yeah, Different. M music is subjective. It affects everybody differently. So I, I guess not only should, you know, we normally call you Andrew. Apparently now we have to call you Coach Andrew. Uh, spent a little time on the bench a couple weeks ago. I, I did. I did. I, I actually I actually thought for a moment uh, I was going to be flying out to Detroit and and maybe getting making my head coach debut, but uh, but but we can talk about that later. It's not happening. So <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah no we uh jeff potter was was out recruiting um you know a couple weekends ago and and uh i took the opportunity to, to jump on the the bench and you know get a little bit of a different perspective um which was actually it was it was a little bit scary uh <laughs> a lot of fun and um you know mostly you know, a good experience. It gave me a little bit of a, a perspective to the the hockey piece and components that I that I haven't seen before. But did you get Did you get your uh, hockey nickname while you were on the bench? I didn't, but I, I I will say that I accomplished my my main goal, which was not to be responsible for too many men on the ice. <laughs> so, um, you know, I considered I considered it a successful weekend uh, for sure. <laughs> very good answer <laughs> uh. okay so the main point of this uh this time one year ago the beginnings of covid we thought we knew what we knew at the time it turns out we had absolutely no clue uh we had you on that show a year ago uh you know season was postponed we were cannonballing into uh the season being canceled a year later um how was that for you looking back on that like that period of time that six seven day period yeah, I mean, it was a whirlwind at the moment, at, at you know, in the moment, um, and it certainly feels like it's been a whirlwind since. I have to say, I think that the USHL did a, 
fantastic job as a league um, in the moment, stopping things, I, I would say, well before most things had, had pulled the plug. Um, really thinking first and foremost about the safety of the players. Um, I, you know, I think there was, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of hope that it would be a, a two week or a three week break and we'd be back to it, you know, flatten the curve seemed to be the, you know, the, the phrase of the moment. And, and obviously <laughs> that has changed dramatically over, over time, but it was a, you know, it was a it was a couple week period that I look back and I, I'm proud to be part of the US at USHL. I really do think they put the players first. Um, and and really, I think that perspective was helpful in the fact that, you know, knock wood, it looks like we're going to get through a, a complete hockey season here. I mean, slightly abridged, I understand, but, uh, you know, a 54 game regular season with playoffs um in an era that not many people can can say that they're doing that um and i think it started then and there in that moment um really nice leadership by by tom garrity um and the board of directors uh met regularly and we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what made sense I think we made a quick decision and it allowed us to really start planning for this year very quickly thereafter. And that was, you know, I think helpful because God knows a lot changed between then and now. Yeah. And um, obviously other leagues are just still trying to figure it out, um, especially north of the border. No two ways about it. Yeah. No two ways about it. And, and listen, when we, when we made a commitment, to play as the young sound phantoms we were making a commitment to play in an in a environment in an environment in which we could have no fans um and i think that speaks a lot to, to ownership and the commitment that they have to the the young men and the time and dedication they've spent to hockey and making sure that that we do everything that we can to to help and to continue to develop them as as hockey players and not waste a year. And uh, I mean, the, the league as a whole, we only had one team who said that they were not playing this year due to COVID. Um, the other one having lost their barn, but I, I guess that makes the decision a little easier. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, again, I'll, I'll, I'll be a little bit careful, um, you know, in terms of what I can say and what I can't say. But when when you know, when decisions were being made, you know, COVID and how it was being treated um, by, you know, state government was very different in in Ohio and Michigan and, and Chicago than it was anywhere else. So when those decisions were being made, I would say there was really, if you take the U.S. team out of the equation, there were really three teams that were, um, and I'm not saying that the others weren't affected, but the others weren't affected in the same way. Um, so I, I would say it was really Chicago, Muskegon, and, and Youngstown that were, were faced with an early decision to play um, in, a, in a potential you know, horrific environment um, as it related to an ability to make this a business. Now, you you mentioned a little bit ago, um, if we go back to it for a second, um, obviously over the summer, uh, just first being able, you know, being able to find out if you could even play at the Cavelli Center, uh, you know, kind of once you got that direction uh, and then, you know, in discussions with the Cavelli Center as far as fans, you know, a cap on fans, all that kind of stuff. Can you talk about as far, basically with uh, Bruce and Murray, uh, cause, you know, cause def, especially financially, they had to make sacrifices, uh, for this season to be able to go ahead. Could you touch on that a little bit? Uh, you know, how instrumental they were in the off season as far yeah. as uh, getting this season able to be played. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it really was the definition of team effort and that starts at the top and it starts with, with Bruce and it starts with Murray and, there was a commitment to two things from ownership, developing hockey players, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and, you know, we, we certainly felt like we've made great strides 
last year um, into into Youngstown becoming a even more of a fabric, a, a part of the fabric of the community um, in the valley. And we we wanted to make sure that that we didn't take we didn't want to pull the phantoms back, um, you know. And so for those two reasons, community and, and hockey development of the young men, they were committed to playing and they were committed to playing, understanding that it was going to come at, at great personal cost. Um, but that commitment by itself was not alone. It was not enough. Right. I mean, we needed you know, Eric Ryan and, and Ken Bigley and Jordan Ryan to be on board. Um, you know, the Cavalli Center is, is not open for any of the, of the typical events that, you know, make that building work. And, um, you know, at the time they, they didn't have a lot of staff working and, uh, you know, it was a, it was, it was a difficult conversation to figure out how we could, um, figure out a structure that allowed them to open the building and have us play, knowing that there were likely very few, if any other events that would be going on at the same time. So, um, you know, I think we worked really hard and we made some, some sacrifices sort of outside of what our lease agreement, you know, says. Um, and, and listen, they made some sacrifices as well. And, and I would, guarantee that if you ask them financially if they would have been better off just keeping the building shuttered or opening for phantoms hockey uh, my my guess is they would have been a toss-up um and so <laughs> they they worked they worked really hard to get there um and then there was one other instrumental you know piece to this which was you know, the Youngstown City Health Department and Aaron Bishop in particular worked very closely with us, we put together a plan which allowed us to go to the state and get a waiver and, and ultimately allowed us to have fans in the building in a, in a time frame when, when we were granted our waiver, it was the only indoor building in the state of Ohio to, to, to have one that would allow three, more than 300 people in the, in the building. And we would not have gotten that done without Aaron Bishop. So it really was a moving parts by, by several people um you know it was it was a long summer it was a busy summer um you know league meetings uh, far more often than you typically would you know at multiple day meetings on zoom with you know 30 participants and you can imagine the fatigue that that comes with with things like that um but the but the bottom line was everybody was there with the goal of playing hockey this year and you know we were we were able to pull it off which is which is quite frankly amazing one question that, <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned we were the only indoor building to, to get a waiver. Do um, you think they're looking at us for data for opening other things? I, I, I hope so, because I think things have been done so well that, you know, it, it's a perfect model almost. But any indicator that, that they might be kind of using us as a, a guinea pig? Yeah, it's a great question, um, Justin. And I have, uh, I, you know, I communicate with Aaron Bishop, you know, usually every week, sometimes every other week. And I know this. I know that as of a week and a half ago, she had not gotten it. She had not received one single complaint about the way we have handled the opening of the building in an environment which is challenging, to say the least. Um, and, and certainly I'm really proud of that. I appreciate what you said, which is, you know, it's, it's been comfortable. It's been, it's been done well. Um, it's certainly taken a lot of coordination and, uh, and a lot of buy-in from people, including our fans. Right. I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, it's, it's, you can have all the roles in the world. If, if the people that are coming to your events don't buy in. Either you don't have anybody in the building, or or you're not being responsible. I I can think of I could think of you know one particular night where I I mean that was the only time I saw security really have to to do any sort of major intervention. Um, you know, just the, the the college kids. You know, kind of what you would expect. 
And then after that, I, yeah, you know, yeah. Beautiful. And, and to the college kids credit, so, right. They got a lot better. Right. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was one night that was a little bit of a challenge and, and we addressed it and, and they did a great job sort of adapting. Um, so yeah, no, I don't. So I know that she's obviously tracking to get back to your question. She's obviously tracking how we're doing, you know, knock wood. We have had, um, zero issues that I'm aware of. Um, so I, I hope that it will be, a you know, a, a lesson, um, or a model that other people can follow and, and how we can open things up safely and responsibly. Okay. So we get to the end of the summer while well, getting into the fall, we find out the seasons ago, we get the schedule 10 away games, uh, in November. And then only, uh, three of those 10 end up getting played. The other seven are suspended or postponed, I should say. And if I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe those postponements didn't have anything to do with the Phantoms teams, with the, fa- with the Phantoms team themselves. Um, yeah, again, if I'm wrong, you know, please correct me, but, uh, I, I, I believe, um, I believe we were responsible for one postponed game the entire season. I'll say that. So what, um, just what was that like internally? You know, you're getting all ramped up to finally get the season started and, you know, you have seven out of 10, 10 games postponed, right. You know, right in that first month. Uh, what, what was that like kind of just like around the team? Uh, you know, trying to get back to some semblance of normalcy, but yet, you know, having that going on as much as it was going on at the same time. Sure. I mean, I, you know, again, this was, this was new territory for every, everybody. And, and um, let me preface this by saying, I am not, I am not in any other building. I'm not in any other locker room. And I, and I am a huge believer that this thing sometimes has a mind of its own and in certain circumstances it doesn't spread and in other circumstances it does right and i don't i don't i think that's one of the confusing things about this virus right but i will say this we went into this season saying our number one responsibility is to be responsible for the young men that are in youngstown and to make decisions that are um have their best interest at heart each and every day and so we have divided the kids into pods we have you know we're not there's there's no team functions we're not doing things as big groups lock the the pods that they are outside of the building is how they're arranged in the locker room uh and joe zadar our athletic trainer is unbelievable um and you know, to this point, it has really been incredible how well we have been able to manage this. For whatever reason, other teams have not had the same success. And it was frustrating um, to get back to your question, right? You, you, you had a season that, that finished prematurely last year. Um, you, you have a season that's beginning later than than it typically does this year you're excited to play hockey and all of a sudden it's kind of a little you know you play a game you have a big break you play a game where you're supposed to go on a road trip for three you get to play one um it was challenging and i and i think that that has um has had an impact on on sort of the success we've had this year um, all of the things I talked about, right? There's, there's less bonding that the boys have an opportunity to do. Um, there's, you know, there's less consistency in terms of scheduling. When we are now playing games, we're playing games in, in, huge, in, in a hugely condensed and compressed manner. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was, it was frustrating, but at the same time, you know, we've taken – we've taken the approach all year. Um, and I, you know, I'm a fan too. So I, I, I understand that in some ways this isn't going to sound right, but winning is not the priority this year, right? Playing hockey, creating a safe environment and giving the opportunity to the guys to develop is, is goal number one. Um, and I think we've done all of that really well. Has it come at, at to some degree, 
it's impacted our ability to be successful on the ice. I think it has, but I think that's probably a good trade in the end of the day. Okay. So I'll maybe move a little uh, lighter subject. I know Justin uh, has been chomping at the bit to ask you about this. Uh, one <laughs> thing about the Phantoms that have been getting uh, rave reviews this year is their look on the ice. So uh... <laughs> yeah. What area where we see some improvement and yeah, that's the jerseys this year. Uh, well, thank you. I get to, I get to actually take yeah. a lot of credit for this conversation. So um, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> and I want to give you the do on that one because yes, it, it is warranted. Um, the thing I've noticed is, you know, it's not just one Jersey or the other. Everyone has their favorite and, you know, it's the rest get shoved aside, but it's like, yeah, the, the, the gray jerseys, I mean, that blew my mind. That was shut up and take my money from, from day we're not, one. We're, we're, I'm not going to talk about my part of that right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, and, and, you know, there's people that, yeah, the, the, the white jerseys that, you know, and then the third jerseys come out, the purple ones. And then, you know, there's a third group of people who are like, hey, wait a minute. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. So what's your, so what's no. your so what are your guys' personal favorite? Do you still the gray? Are you still going gray? Still, yeah, the charcoal. Gray. Still the gray, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one of a. I mean, that's one of my all time favorite hockey jerseys. Period. Dot at this yeah. point, you know that goes like up there with the uh, old school Phoenix Coyotes. You know, with the trim at the. You yeah, know, yeah, I I mean I have to say the the I, I'm I'm thrilled with how they all turned out as well. Um. I'm not sure. I, I, I think, I, I think the charcoal gray is, is, is my favorite as well. Although I think it's hard for a white Jersey to look great. And I think this one really does. Um, and I do think the purple one has taken everybody by surprise. Um, even, even my, my favorite uh, Russian hockey player, <laughs> Georgi Merkulov, <laughs> who, was not happy with me when I said we were getting a purple Jersey. It's his favorite Jersey now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been great. I, the, the part that's been a little hard for me is, as you know, since I've been here, we've done new jerseys every year and I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of has, I, I, there's a part of me that thinks we should, uh, we should give these another year. I, 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 me what personally, I would not begrudge mm -hmm. you for that to me. To me, especially the charcoal yeah. gray, I think it was kind of a, a way of redesigning the look of the team, but yet at the same time, it wasn't a radical change. And I, you know, and yeah. I think that's a lot, a lot yeah. of the appeal to it. You see other teams change their jerseys and it's just, it's nothing like what you know from that team ever. And what, you know, when you look at these charcoal gray jerseys, you look at it and you say, yes, that's a Youngstown Phantoms jersey that it's, you know, it's so new and it's so refreshing without being a radical change. I love it. I love it. And, and I have, I, I have heard compliments coming, not just from Youngstown fans either. So I thought I'd throw that Always out there. Always good to hear. Always good to hear. Yeah, no, I was, um, from the minute we put these together, I was excited about it. And, um, Sam, don't give up hope. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> trying to, I'm still trying to, uh, let you dig your way out of a poor right decision. Up. It, it was <laughs> it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a poor decision. It's just I had a other decision to make at the time. For anybody listening that has no Fair clue enough. what's being talked about, uh, when the uh, those jerseys were made available to season ticket holders uh, that you could get them personalized, I was not able to order one at that time. It wasn't in the cards for me, and I've been kicking myself about it ever since. Um. Yeah. Well, I don't give up hope. I'm still trying. <laughs> okay so uh coming down to the end here um just in general uh what are you hoping to see as far as the rest of this season obviously um the record isn't where we want it to be there's a lot of insanely talented kids on this team uh some of them uh georgie riley uh matthias they're all going to be moving on after this season so as far as the games that are left what what is it you're hoping to see uh you know as far as this team and just uh as the rest of the season plays out yeah, I think um, I think it's a few things. Um, you know, one thing I'll mention, and I know I know you guys probably you probably have the stat, and I don't I don't have it handy. But if you take away empty net goals, the number of one goal games that we've lost this year 
is absurd. I mean, it's 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 kind of hard to imagine that that uh, the math could possibly work out this way. I mean, it's it, it's crazy. So, um, you know, we we've, we've been close, um, but obviously the winds haven't been where where we want them to be. So, so what do we want with the rest of the season? Um, we want, and I, I think you've probably seen um this already right there's there's usually more of a grace period for young players to to sort of work their way into the lineup and and this year has been you know harder because there's there's been more of a it's a shorter season and it's been more of a compressed schedule um but you're starting to see young players whether it be you know jack Silich or or, or jack larrigan or kenta iso guy um, you know, they're starting to make sort of they're looking more and more comfortable uh, on the ice and, and fitting in so much better um, as they understand the, the, the speed of the game and the physicality of the game and all the things that, that come with the transition to the best junior league in the U.S. Um, so my my hope is that those young players and, and it goes beyond the three of them. I mean, we have, we have a number of, of, of young players um, continue to get ice time, continue to continue to take advantage of those minutes. And I think, you know, you'll see, you know, those minutes climb a little bit as we get towards the tail end of the season um, and, and develop in a way so that when we step into the season, next, the summer and the season next year, they're ready to be key elements to the team as we, as we, you know, move into the 21, 22 season. Yeah. I definitely think with uh, draft picks next year uh, you know, it's, it's lining up right now to be a very good, you know, potentially be a very good draft for us. I also think that there are a lot of teams in this league that are doing very well this year, but are going to be in a lot of trouble uh, when chunks of their roster go back to Canada next season. Um, Yeah. So uh, I mean, definitely, I think as far as next year, I think, uh, we're setting ourselves up to be in a pretty good position. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, you know, I think it's a really interesting point. Um, you know, we as an organization made a decision that we were not going to lessen our focus on, on our talent that we've drafted and, and developed over years with our affiliate list to try to get, you know, sort of one year um, win at all cost type players. Um, and that's just a choice. I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong, but there's, there's no doubt that some teams took a different approach, um, than we did. And, and yeah, I mean, that's had an impact, um, for sure, for sure. But we have a, we have a tremendous amount of draft picks. I don't think anybody really understands what the landscape of next year is going to look like, to be perfectly honest with you, because, you know, obviously the NCAA is granting a fifth year of eligibility to college players. Um, you know, there are rumors out there that there's going to be um, a one year transfer opportunity for kids to go from one school to the other and, and not have to sit out a year. And if that passes, it has not passed yet. But if that passes, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be an interesting summer as schools try to figure out what they're going to do. And that obviously has a trickle down effect to us. Yeah. What, what one season giveth the other, the next take That's it right. away. That's right. So it's going to be an interesting summer for, for hockey across the board. Um, but, um, you know, Brad has made some, some difficult moves, right? I mean, Ben shown has been here, um, since he was 16 years old. Um, you know, you get to, you build a relationship with these young men, you build a relationship with their, their families. It's not easy to let players like him walk out the door. Um, but, you know, I think it was, uh, I think given where we were in the moment um, and, uh, you know, it gave, gave Ben an opportunity to hopefully go compete for, for a Clark cup and, and, you know, have a little bit more opportunity to, to be in front of NHL scouts um as he as he you know gets into his draft year and um and obviously it set us up with uh with some pretty significant uh draft picks going forward so hopefully it's a win-win any um i don't know if you you know but um 
any chance the once youth seasons draw down, we'll see maybe some affiliates come up and see what they're made of? Oh, so, yeah. I mean, the answer is it's a little bit, that's also a little bit more challenging this year. Um, I hope the answer is yes, but nationals on the youth levels have been pushed back. Um, and so any youth team that is nationals bound, um, there's a freeze on our ability to bring those kids up and have them play. Like I think two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So one or two. Weeks so, ago. you know, unfortunately that's going to limit some of that opportunity this year. Um, but there are some of our affiliates that clearly, um, you know, that are not on those uh, national bound teams. And, and yes, I would expect to see some of those in our lineup over the over the next you know six weeks. OK, so we've been talking to Phantoms team president, Andrew Goldman. Uh, Andrew, you look very comfy right now. You haven't been giving me motion sickness at all with your camera uh, during this entire thing. So. Sorry. <laughs> You, hey, yeah. my well, you know, you have to give me some credit. I'm on yeah. a phone, my uh, you know, so my arm hasn't <laughs> fallen off yet. Uh, you, you do look very comfortable right now, uh, there in your home. So, uh, but yeah, it's my theater. It's my little. It's my little there theater area. It's soundproof, so I figured. I'd... Yeah, I saw the I saw the projector up yeah. on the ceiling. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for coming on. Uh, this was a milestone. This is your third time on the show now, uh, which now means we have to schedule Matt Lipsack. Uh, he, he's not a fan of being in a horse race with you for a number of appearances on here. So, which means now we have to schedule him uh, to get him caught up with you. But uh, this is the third time we've had you on now. Uh, definitely. We appreciate it. Every time you're on here, every time you're willing to chat with us, even though you put up with our BS every home game anyways, but it's um, always a pleasure having you on. In, in all seriousness, um, your guys' commitment to the team is is meaningful. Even again, you know, I don't I don't always expect to to hear positive things come out of your mouth, and that's okay. Um, it is, <laughs> and often you do <laughs> not. Okay. I'm I'm all I'm all yeah. for that. Um, that's how that's how we all get better. Um, and uh, always have to take the time. It's uh, you know, listen, we we are. We talked about all the challenges that that went into making this year happen. Um, but the flip side is, uh, you know, we've had a lot of support and through through a not only a challenging year with COVID, but a challenging year on the ice. And we appreciate it. And, and anything that, that I can do to help uh, sort of continue to 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 get sort of what an awesome experience the young sound phantoms are and 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 uh what an incredible brand of hockey it is i'm happy to do it so thanks for having me all right yeah thank you very much for being okay. on uh we'll see you here in a couple weekends awesome awesome all right. thanks guys thank see you. you soon